In this video, we're going to focus on animations where we can, for example, if I would reload this, you can see here we get the animations where we trigger the first and the last bar chart or data set with a different animation compared to the others. But of course, we will apply them as well on every single bar or on every single data set as well. So let's start to explore this. So let's start to look how to use the animation in the bar chart on load in chart.js and specifically on the loading of the chart itself. So what we're going to do here, first of all, get the boiler template, which you can find in charges 3com getting started. So once you're on here, and you can find this link as well in the description box. Copy this boiler template. Copy all of this. And if you want to understand what this uh, code all does, make sure you watch this video here. I'm going to paste that in there, cut out this title, put the title in there, save, refresh, there we are. Let's maximize the size, 80%, and now we're good to go. So what is very important with animation? There's basically two objects. One is animations, with an S, which is plural, and you have animation, which is without the S and singular, and they're both different. So you have to watch out with one or the other. Animations with an S will trigger these kind of points here. Where you can say the border width, get an animation. So that's why they have a plural because you could pinpoint different items. While animation without the S would be basically focused on the loading effect like this. So let's start to do something really, really simple here. What I want to do is I want to affect the loading of all of these items here. So I'm going to put it in the options. And in the option, I'm going to say animation. And then we're going to work on this. To do this, what is very important is we need to have a variable that can check if something is uh, already uh, loaded or not. So basically what we want to do here, create something, you can say here a let value. I'm going to say this let value will be having a value of delay, but we don't assign anything to this. That would mean that the default value will be undefined. So this will be important for us to check, are we fully loaded? Because we want to make sure, or, or sorry, we want to make sure it will be only on load. So later on, if we click on this, this is a different type of animation than on loading. So if I refresh on load, you have like this. Although you can see here right now, well, you can do, you do see the differences here. So what I want to do then here is first of all, I'm going to say on complete. So when the chart has been fully completed in loading. We want to make sure we have uh, we don't use this animation. So we're going to say here, delayed equals true. Very simple. We're going to set here then the value. So once we did that, we're going to put a comma here. Then what we want to do here is another animation or another object. It's delay. So say here delay, and in delay we're going to work with the context. So this is a callback functionality, just like the above. This one here is as well a callback functionality built in into Chart.js. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to say here, well, before we even do something here, what I want to do is here, I want to say a console.log. And then you can say here, context. So you can see what we basically have here. Let's save this, refresh, open up developer tab, and then you can see here an object is being loaded because of the animation. So what we get here is a few items. First of all, you can see active, yes or no. What this truly means is basically, if I hover over an item, this becomes active and let me just refresh, you will see that. If I hover over it, you can see here, if I go here, it shows active true, and then if I move away from it, it's active false. It indicates here the data index, which would basically indicate the data point. So the index of that data point. So let's refresh again and uh, let's click on one of these items here. So active indicating are we hovering yes or no. This is data point. Then we have here the elements and then the size of it. I will just ignore this one. We don't need this for now. Then we have here parse, which would be basically the X value, which is index zero. And then here the value of number 18, which is basically the Y value, which just makes all sense. Then here the type is data. This is important. Type data would indicate a data point. If this is not a type data, it could be something else, a data set or something. Uh, although I haven't really explored this deeply, so but you can see here, I guess it indicates here the type data set and data. So if there are any other ones, I'm not sure of it. I don't think so, but it should be a data point. So that's why data refers reference to data point. So what I need to know is basically this. 
uh, we have here the mode of undefined. This is important here. What does this mean? This means it's being loaded on first load. So or it's on load. So if I click on this now, what happens? And scroll down here, you will see now it is uh, on mode height. And if I click again on this, then what happens? You will get the mode show. These are different animations as I indicated before. So these are different animations being shown. So we can see here if by default the first load is undefined and that helps us to identify if it's already loaded or if we are refreshing the page with an unload animation. All right, enough about the, the logic about it. Let's start to work on this. So if we know these these points, first of all, then maybe what we're going to do here, let's get a console log. I'm going to say a yeah, dot. What I want to do is a type. And then next, I want to do a console log here. And we're going to say here the mode. And I'm going to just hide this, save, refresh. So you can see here, default and data. So if I click on this, then it says height and data, show and data. All right, so now we see here the differences. So what I want to do here is basically this. We have here the delay of true, but you can see here we have delayed. If undefined means basically it's false. So what I want to say here, the following, we're going to create an if statement. We're going to say if content dot height equals strict data. This should be data, not data point of a data set. And then we have another condition, and another condition is the context dot mode equals strict default. So the, once we did this, then we're going to put in here. And later on, I'm going to also use the delayed as another item here. So then what I want to do here is we're going to create here a constant or not even a constant, a let value that I should put here above. We're going to say this, this let value of delay will be by default set on zero. We're going to say zero here. But then what we want to do is if we are on first load, in that case, the delay will be the animation we're going to create, which is delay will be then equal to the context.data index. And what I want to do is I want to delay it. Every data point will be delayed with, with a certain amount of a millisecond. So for example, this one will be zero, but then this one, basically index number one, this is index zero. So index one will be multiplied by 300 milliseconds. This one by, uh, you know, again, same. And then you can see here it will be slower and slower. So what we're going to do here, multiply by 300 milliseconds. So once we did this, then what I want to say here, enter return delay. Save that. Now I'm going to refresh here. And you can see here now this starts to work. Oh, let me just refresh this one more time. There you are. However, if I click on this and do this, you can see here it will not interfere with our, our uh, showing and hiding animation. So it will only work on load. All right, so this is number one here, but now you might say, all right, if I put another data set, how does this work? Let's copy this, put another one, comma, save, refresh. Now you see here, maybe this is an undesirable effect because you say, well, hold on. This data set should maybe be also slow as well. So how do we do this? Well, let's scroll down here. Let's play around here with this. What we could do here is another plus, and this plus will say here, content dot data set but then we do here the index well the data set index because we had here the data index which is the data point index and then here the data set so if you have two data sets we're going to say here multiply by 100 so if i save this of course before if we save this well let me just show you this you see here now it works fine what i do recommend here once you have more data points this could interfere because if you have 10 data points it would load already in advance so let me just show you here if we're going to put in a few more data points, copy this, paste, 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 save that. And then if I refresh, you can see here what is going on. And maybe you don't want that here. Then of course you need to create your formula correctly. So let's scroll down here. Although this looks quite nice. Uh, we have this here. Maybe we could say here, um, or maybe we can increase this. If we say here, we have six items. Well, let's do this 500. And we're going to put this here on 50. Then Within 10 data points, this should be fine. There you are. It looks like fireworks or a fountain. Quite nice. So this is one of the items here. And you can see here, all of this here, this one works on fine. So what I want to do here, 
One more thing is just to make sure is the delayed here that we have here. Because we want to make sure that this has another condition. And then if delayed or is not equal to delayed, which basically means this, this not delayed would mean it is false. And um, here a delay is set on true, because if it's true, what will happen, of course, uh, well, basically, if this is already on complete, it's done, then we don't have the animation of this here, or we would uh, impact that. Anyway, that, that is a bit complicated, even for me, I have to type this a bit more deeper, I have to research this a bit more in depth. But this is the most important part of this. So this is with animation here. So you might say, well, okay, uh, if I want to do maybe specifically for my data set, let's cut this out. Then I'm going to say here, just only on this data set here, I'm going to put the animation. Let's make sure here. If I save this, then refresh. Oh, let's double check here. Animation, then I put a comma here. Of course, no comma here, but there you are. You can see here now we're only pinpointing a single data set here. So what we could do here is we could copy this. Let's copy this entire item here. And I'm going to make another one here. And uh, let's put it here, comma. And then I'm going to say this animation, well, because this data set zero, this will load immediately basically compared to the others. Well, what we could say here, or well, those at least like that. So if I do this, as you can see here, it does work. The first one here is zero, zero. We could maybe change that. Uh, maybe delay of one. If I save that, let's see what happens then. Not really much, but anyway, that's basically based on our formula. However, with this, by pinpointing individual data points, you could highlight those compared to the others. And that's basically with the animation option here. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to go deeper into the animation such as background colors where you have the loop, in that case, I'm going to recommend you this one here, the charges background color animation for a bar chart. In that case here, you can see here, we will get this nice fancy animation when you are hovering on it, it will also trigger. So that's another one that I would highly recommend you to explore.